Hi there everyone, Professor Steve here, um, and today we will start the uh, benthic unit. Uh, when we say benthic, uh, you've seen probably the terms somewhere on the site, or, or I've mentioned either benthic or the word benthos. Um, and when we say benthic, we just mean sea floor or, or sea bottom. Um, and the benthic environment is, is anything having to do with being on or in this, the, the, the sea floor. Um, when you when I, when you hear or I say the term benthos, we're talking about the life in or on the sand and the seafloor. We're talking about the organisms and where they fit in the uh, grand scheme of of energy flow and biogeochemical cycling um, um, as an amendment or sort of an addition to to what we went over last the last unit. Um, but first, let's start with the actual environment um, and 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 what that is and and where where the benthic environment and the benthos get their energy from. <clears throat> so, um, a good majority of so, if you remember, we have the benthic zones. Um, everything close to the sh to the shore, to the coast, that's affected by the tides is called intertidal or coastal. Um, that that first part of real sloping away from the coast, getting deeper, we call the shelf. Um, and then we get into uh, the the steeper slope uh, or the bathal and abyssal zones and uh, which are the deep deepest part deeper parts of the majority of the ocean make up the majority of the seafloor and then hadal the hadal zones and trenches are the deepest parts um, and we used to believe and it's still true that the that a good portion of the life occurs near the shore in the intertidal zone um, one of the reasons being um, that it's a good spot for them to, to, to get an energy input, and we'll see that in a minute. But we now know that there's a good deal of life that goes on in each and every zone. Um, some of them are more sparse and, and less populated, but, but life does occur in, in all of the benthic zones. <clears throat> but let's start with the uh, with the coastal, or what we call the intertidal zones. There are two basic types of intertidal um, benthic environments. Um, we have what's called a rocky intertidal uh, benthic environment and that's associated with uh, rocky um, uh, hard mountainous sort of coastline uh, that's eroded away by weathering and, and, and wave action from the ocean and it causes this steep incline so it's rocky um, carved away very sharply and so we have a steep incline which means that the high tide zone um, is, is, is much much higher than the low tide zone uh, so there's a very big contrast in depth between high tide and low tide. And that affects the benthos in that the guys that, that are adapted to live, the organisms that are adapted to live in the high tide zones, um, during low tide they experience um, you know, desiccation. They're dried out, they're exposed to the sun, and they have to be able to handle that for much longer periods of time because it's such a steep a steep uh, decrease in, in, the, in the coast and such a steep... De uh, difference in the tidal zones. Um, whereas the guys that live at the bottom in their tidal zones spend most of their time underwater, um, but, but, but all this entire coastal benthic environment has to be able to um, uh, withstand strong wave action. And, and, um, and it's very rocky, so this is a rocky substrate that they all live on, but, it, it, but that's one type of benthic intertidal zone. The other type is an estuary or salt marsh intertidal zone, um, and that's one that we associate with uh, so rocky intertidal you'll see in our northern Atlantic coast, but but uh, a lot of Pacific coast um, is really associated with rocky intertidal. Um, and estuary salt marsh is what we associate with much of the eastern coast. So our Atlantic seaboard, our our coast is is a lot of it is estuary salt marsh. And the difference is it's very shallow. Um, so in this we have very sh less wave action less rocky mountainous coast to erode and so it's lots of uh, sands and silts and it's eroded much more shallower and so the difference between high tide and low tide is much much lower uh, is a much less extreme so so um, you know there are still organisms that have to be able to remain dried out and some that have to be able to remain submerged but it's sandy it's silty and and it's a shallow slope it's not a steep slope so where do the the organisms that live in the benthic environments um, get their uh, get their energy? And the first answer to that is well, the same type of organisms that the 
that that the uh, water column or the or the open ocean get their energy from and that's a type of algae okay so it's not phytoplankton they don't float around freely but they live in the benthic environment so they live either on top or in in the sediments or the rocks they grow there and we could just call them microalgae because they're not plankton they don't float around but they're doing primary productivity right pp primary productivity and so that's a that is where uh, in these intertidal zones where the sun penetrates to the sea floor we can get things like diatoms like dinoflagellates and these guys these guys are, are a type of cyanobacteria that can grow very thick into these kinds of mats here and so the same types of organisms single cell they're microscopic um, they usually live in, in on the very surface but not much deeper than three centimeters of the sediments same organisms and the reason for this is they have to have access to the sun in order to do photosynthesis right the second source is the more obvious one but it's the same type of source it's still primary productivity but it's not microalgae but it's macroalgae so micro means microscopic macro means bigger we can see it with our eye macroalgae and these are the seaweeds right so there's the sea grasses the kelps there's some leafy al there's some red algae that grow very leafy and some some red kelps um, and these dominate certain areas, especially certain areas of the of the rocky intertidal zones. Um, but so sea grasses, they like a softer bottom, so they usually grow in sands and and, and muds. But um, uh, leafy reds and kelps, they like hard rocky substrates, like uh, like the rocky coasts of the Pacific, where we get kelp forests. But they're essentially doing the same job as the phytoplankton do. They're trapping energy in the form of sunlight. They're fixing organic carbon, the same as the microalgae, and um, and that is a a, a way of uh, fueling an ecosystem as we as we know that already. The third, <clears throat> and probably the source of energy to uh, really what is the majority of the sea floor. Um, so we're talking about away from the coast where the sunlight does not reach. The sunlight does not reach deep to the ocean, to the deeper ocean uh, sea floors, benthic environments. So what we get is what we call sedimentation. Sedimentation is just the settling of particles. Um, so we get primary productivity forming up here, right? We get um, organisms eating the primary productivity, the consumers. We get uh, death, we get excretion, we get respiration, we get uh, this particulate organic carbon pool in the form of all kinds of things, right? Snot, poop, dead organisms all sticking together, and they have the ability to sink. And when they sink and settle out and make it all the way to the sea floor, that is a source of energy to the sea floor. Um, and, and, and since the majority of the seafloor is deep and the sun does not reach it, this is a, a primary source to the majority of the ocean seafloors. So its primary productivity occurs in the sur sea surface or throughout the water column. And then all these processes we've learned about in the, in, the, in the water column occur. And then we get sinking. And by the time it settles to the seafloor, uh, it's an energy source. It's organic matter input to the benthic environment. So it's not primary productivity directly, right? Um, so that ends this lesson on the benthic environment and and its input energy and um, the next one will be about the benthos so the actually actual organisms and how they fit into energy cycling um, but before you get to that um, I want you to watch the video on this main page here and um, and see some uh, real-life examples of of how sedimentation fuels benthic organisms uh, see you next lesson thank you